If you ever needed to move a lot of gear over a long distance in a snow covered environment, don't sweat it. In this video, that's what we're going to cover. A pork sled is the perfect solution, but it can have little dangers, and we're going to try and take some of those dangers out, both in the construction process and the use of the sled. For years, I taught survival and outdoor leadership in the Marine Corps. Now my passion is helping you develop the skills and techniques required for outdoor recreation. So come along as we explore survival and bushcraft, useful projects, occasional gear reviews, and all manner of field skills. I'm Norseman, and this is Survivalogy 101. So before we get into it, consider subscribing right there. I already have a sled, but now I need to make a plan. So here's the plan. It has two holes here. And what I want is handles. So I want two handles on the back, three on the sides, and then two on the front. I'm gonna want two poles. The poles are gonna have a piece of cord that runs through them. So I'll have clips on this end and clips on this end. So they can clip into the rings. So I'm gonna need a bunch of cordage. Need one, two, three, four clips, one, two rings. One, two, three, four washers. So I guess I have two clips, two D's, and a rope. So I gotta go to the hardware store. Let's go make a sled.
One major thing to consider when you're cutting your poles is whether you're going to be using skis or snowshoes when you're pulling your sled. If you have skis on, you're going to need more length in the back. So put on your gear, measure the distance you're going to need at a full stride, and then cut your poles to fit it. So now that we built the sled, we need to come up with a belt system in order to tow it. I'm using a piece of old climbing rope that will wrap around my body about two to two and a half times. So all I did to make my belt was secure two steel rings with two overhand knots. The rings should be positioned just wider than your body so that they ride on the outside of your hips. The reason you put the rings out on the sides of your hips is if your sled pushes toward you you don't get those two poles in the middle of your back which could cause more injury. You want them on the side so you can control them. It's also a lot more handy when turning because you can control the sled with your arms if you need a little extra leverage. I've seen a lot of polk belt systems but I've never seen one that was as easy to put together and repair in the field than this. Now some of the fancy belt systems have pouches on them but I wouldn't advise using that either because if you have to ditch your sled when you hit the quick release, you lose all the gear on your waist as well. For that reason, I would suggest wearing a small backpack with essential gear in it or carrying a satchel. So do you do it differently or can you think of a better way? Let me know. Put it down in the comments. Now let's load it up, hook it up, and take this baby out for her maiden voyage. Oh my child, I know you hurt and you can't let go. It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt Ooh, I know you tried so hard Ooh, I know you've done your part It's not fair did your time How much longer will you suffer in this life But don't give up Just hold on tight It'll be alright All your life you've tried be a good man inside Did everything that you thought you should Didn't seem to do you any good So we basically 
just converted a rope tow utility sled into a fully functional backcountry pole that is safer and easier to repair in the backcountry than most professionally manufactured poles. Wait, don't go. One more thing. If you found any of that information useful, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and then share this video with somebody who you think might be able to use it. How much longer will you suffer in this life? But don't give up. Just hold on tight.